Thank you everybody for being here today. Um, I'm joined by uh, General Seltzer and the uh, Border Czar uh, Mike Banks. Uh, I want to explain to you uh, what Texas is doing at this time. Uh, to expand our border security capabilities, uh, we are building a new Texas Military Department base camp that allows the Texas National Guard to increase and to improve operations in this area. What you see now is the first stage of construction has already begun on what is 80 acres uh, of an area to be built out for this base camp. From your camera view, it goes all the way down the edge of here to those trees, all the way to the back, uh, close to where the river is. Uh, on this side, uh, just back behind you, about 50 feet uh, is where it stops. Uh, this will increase the ability for a larger number of Texas Military Department personnel in Eagle Pass to operate more effectively and more efficiently. It will house uh, up to 1,800 soldiers with the ability uh, to expand up to 2,300 uh, if we have surge needs. It will in include uh, individual rooms for soldiers. Uh, it'll provide a large dining facility recreation, computers, things like Wi-Fi. Uh, but, but for now, National Guard have been scattered across uh, this entire region uh, in cramped quarters, uh, away from fellow uh, soldiers and guard, sometimes traveling long distances to be able to do their job. What this is going to do is to dramatically improve the conditions for our soldiers. I wanna thank the men and women soldiers behind me right now as well is their colleagues serving up and down the entire border. Texas would not be able to respond the way they, that we are responding uh, if it were not for uh, the heroes uh, of the Texas National Guard. Before this effort here, they've been living in conditions that were atypical uh, for military operations. Uh, now, because of the magnitude of what we're doing, uh, because of uh, the need to sustain uh, and actually expand our efforts of what we're doing. Uh, it's essential that we build this base camp uh, for these soldiers. It's gonna be good for them, improve living conditions, uh, improve the quality of life, uh, and improve uh, and sustain a very strong morale uh, for our soldiers. Uh, what this will do uh, also a little bit more specifically is going to consolidate our forces. Again, as, as opposed to being scattered around many different places across this region, they will be operating out of one place. It will amass a large army in a very strategic area. It will increase the speed and flexibility of the Texas National Guard to be able to respond to crossings. We all know what's been going on at Shelby Park. Actually, what's going on at Shelby Park is now less than what was happening a month ago or two months ago or a year ago, definitely. But what we need to be able to do, and, and that is to make sure that the National Guard has the flexibility and the proximity to any type of crossings uh, north or south of Shelby Park so that they will be able to move swiftly to those locations uh, and be able to uh, impede the ability for anybody to cross illegally. This will organize substantial forces also uh, to expand the razor wire barriers that are going up. In this area, well, listen, we've seen the effectiveness of, of the razor wire in Shelby Park, uh, where crossings have, have gone from 3,000, 4,000, or 5,000 people a day to less than 1% of that crossing illegally per day. And that's because of the effectiveness of the razor wire. Our goal is to make sure that we expand the effectiveness of that razor wire to uh, more areas along this border. Ha having the soldiers located right here, right by the river, uh, they're, they're gonna have uh, the ability to more quickly be able to construct that razor wire barrier. And this will reduce the travel time and costs of current living conditions. Listen, as I pointed out earlier, this, some people who are in the guard, they may be 50 miles away, an hour away, having to take an hour of their time to, to get here, and then an hour of the time to get back home, meaning that basically they have not 24 hours in a day, they have 22 hours in a day, 
plus two hours of travel time. We're going to make their lives better, but also make the National Guard more efficient by having them right here uh, at the scene uh, where they need to be or close to where they need to be. And I want to assure you, and, and the general can expand upon this in more detail, the cost of this project are going to be minimal. The reason for that is, yes, it's going to cost some money to be able to build this out, but when this is built out, there will be a reduction of the costs that is being incurred already. What's being incurred already in all these hotel rooms and other locations where uh, the guard are staying is going to be more expensive per person than what it's going to cost to house the guard here. And so this will improve the quality of conditions and lower the cost uh, of those conditions. So this is going to be a win-win uh, for the National Guard and for the state of Texas. And the last thing I'll say is that the efforts of the National Guard, they're working. Those aren't just my words. Those are the words of, of experts who have analyzed uh, the data uh, of what's happening on the border here. And they are saying that uh, the resistance that the Texas National Guard has provided uh, is ensuring uh, that there is a reduced number of people crossing the border. So illegal, Ill, illegal crossings are down and coincidentally, uh, razor wire barrier is up and, and we, continue, we will continue uh, to muster the efforts that are needed to make sure that Texas does the job that the United States Congress has mandated. The United States Congress has mandated for barriers to be built on the border. Biden is not building those barriers. Texas, however, is doing the job that Congress has mandated in law. And for that, I want to express my gratitude to the Texas National Guard for stepping up and getting that job done. Uh, now I'm going to call up uh, the Adjutant General, General Seltzer. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, the Governor is employing every available resource and strategy as he executes his, his, uh, his known right to protect and defend the, the borders of Texas. Uh, what I want to say, first of all, is this is an expansion of what we're seeing uh, from the Shelby Park uh, uh, events. Uh, we've shut down Shelby Park. Uh, this base that we're setting up here, Ford Operating Base Eagle, is an 80 acre complex that extends along the, uh, the water in the Rio Grande and is situated about six miles south of Shelby Park. This uh, base camp allows for the housing of 1,800 troops. As the governor has said, uh, these troops will be housed in their own individual rooms with a minimum of 1,800 square feet of space. There will also be a surge capability for an additional 500 troops. Should we need to deploy the Texas Tactical Border Force to this area, we can deploy and house them right here on the border. In support of our troops, there will be facilities like a 700 uh, seat, uh, 700 seat dining facility. There will be weight and cardio center, a recreation center and laundry facilities. To take care of our troops, there will be facilities where we can house our medical, psychological health, and also our chaplaincy programs. And for operations, we'll have three command posts on site. Uh, we'll have weapons storage rooms, uh, vehicle maintenance bays, and also a FAA regulation helipad. But these are not the only operations that we're expanding uh, under the governor's orders. In the coming weeks, we'll be executing a four-phased operation to expand north and south of Eagle Pass, putting up additional barriers in order to fortify the border, as the governor has said, to the south and north of Eagle Pass. Additionally, we are adding three more uh, uh, fan boats to the river we're also expanding our drone program and our radar truck capabilities. Again, thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Um, the Governor, the Texas Military Department, 
and the Texas uh, Department of Public Safety, again, is using all available resources and strategy to protect the state of Texas. And now the Texas borders are my banks. Good afternoon. I think the key thing you want to take away from this is that what we're doing by building this is we're providing a better quality of life for the soldiers. We're doing it saving the taxpayers of Texas at the same time while ensuring that we become even more efficient by having more time on target with these soldiers. So I want to talk about that. And then I'm going to talk about the numbers just for a minute. All right, prior to coming on, as you, many of you have heard, I spent many years in the Border Patrol, well over 23 years. And if you would have told me that Texas was going to be able to achieve what they've achieved just in the last year alone, I wouldn't have believed it. I wouldn't have believed it myself, right, even knowing what my capabilities are. But the very fact that you look at one sector in Tucson, Arizona, and every day for the last month and a half, that sector has out apprehended and had more crossings than the entire state of Texas, right? If you look at three to 5,000, there was a single day when there was over 6,000 people that came through that border right there at Eagle Pass. And to see those numbers decrease the way they have at the significant number they have to where we've gone to 1% of what was crossing a month and a half, two months ago, I think it's phenomenal. It's a testament of what these soldiers are doing, what DPS is doing, um, and, and, and achieving what the governor has set out for us to achieve. Uh, and so I think what you're gonna see is we're doing what's called gain, maintain, and expand. We've gained control of this area. Now we're gonna maintain that control as we continue to expand those operations to bring that same level of reduction across the border in the state of Texas. And Governor, I applaud you for your leadership and the moral courage to stand up and do what this administration is not doing. Um, it is it's just absolutely absurd to believe that we have to fight the, 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 the federal government daily. You know, so it's, it's either do the job that you've been mandated by Congress to do as the federal government or just get out of the way and let us get it done because Texas is going to protect Texas. And I thank you for that, Governor. Uh, thank you to uh, Mike Banks, the Texas border czar, who, as, as you all know, and he just said, he served in, in uh, the Border Patrol for 23 years. But the point I want to make is uh, just during his time here today, uh, he has spent more time on the border as border czar of Texas uh, than Kamala Harris, the federal border czar has spent on the border in Texas. Last thing is, once again, I want to express my gratitude to General Seltzer and the Texas National Guard uh, for going above and beyond uh, to make sure that uh, they are showing uh, the way that Texas will defend itself uh, from the lawlessness uh, that's been created by Joe Biden's refusal to follow the laws of the United States Congress and secure our border. I'll take a few questions. Listen, we, we have been successful in reducing crossings uh, in Shelby Park. One thing that we know uh, is the cartels and the migrants will explore areas both north and south of that park. If we don't maintain and expand uh, our defense, uh, those migrants and the cartels will exploit those openings. We want to ensure uh, that we deny the exploitation of those openings. Second is, as we all know, come springtime, uh, there's going to be additional caravans uh, that are making their way through uh, the southern and central part of Mexico, deciding where they are going to be going. Uh, we want to make sure that when they come to the crossroad about are they going to go to Texas, are they going to go elsewhere, uh, they will know the wrong place to go is the state of Texas. You credit the razor wire for the decline. You don't think the Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's meeting with Mexico had anything to do with that? Uh, of course not, because as everyone knows, uh, it's not Mexico who controls the border. It's the cartels who control the border. The cartels operate completely independently, and they'll do whatever they want to do. Uh, if they want to cross, they'll cross, regardless of what uh, the leadership in Mexico says. Uh, and because the cartels have realized uh, they're having a harder time uh, making money uh, facing the resistance in Texas, when there are gaping openings in Arizona, New Mexico, uh, as well as California. Uh, and so, uh, as is typical of almost any human being, if there's an easier way to get the same thing done, they're gonna choose the path of least resistance. The cartels are choosing the, the path of least resistance. Governor, when you visit Mexico, um, sorry, um, when you go to Mexico, I was in Mexico in Asia two last year, but there are checkpoints all over right now in the United States. Do any migrants with us papers, they just you know, send them going to check, they deport them, so if you look, if you go to Piedras Negras, you don't see many migrants anymore because they would be deported.
Poland. But at the same time, you know, the water level, the flow of water in the Rio Grande is ten times as high as it was in December. So it's not possible to wade through anymore. And it's not even possible to swim through anymore. So it is real, it, it, in reality, you know, the uh, barbed wires and the troops that deter, that, that deter the migrants from coming or is it rather, you know, the Mexican, you know, change of policy and that very high water level in the Rio Grande. So you said something that's just uh, totally false. You, you, what you said is that uh, the only people who are allowed to be coming through Mexico uh, to cross the border illegally are those with papers. There, there's no one crossing uh, the water with, with papers uh, that allow them to get in here. That's just completely false. Uh, also, with regard to the water level, listen, uh, in the Eagle Pass area, uh, the, the water level almost always, especially in Shelby Park, uh, is deep enough that you're always going to have to swim uh, to, get, to get across the river there. Uh, in times before, when people had to swim across that area, uh, again, you would have 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people crossing there uh, until Shelby Park uh, was wired up. Uh, and, and again, I can just repeat myself, uh, and that is uh, decisions are being made uh, to cross uh, in states other than Texas uh, because Texas has fortified a barrier uh, that discourages crossing in this area. All right, not that I know of. Two more questions. I have a question. Go. The activist from the O5 is saying that Shelby Park has to be open in order because they pay taxes on this. What is your response to that? So I've been down uh, in Shelby Park uh, several times in the past 10 days. Uh, and it, it is wired shut from illegal immigrants crossing. But every single time that I've been there, uh, I've been through the areas on both sides of the bridge uh, that have a golf course. And there have been golfers out golfing on that golf course, being able to use the park for the purpose for which it was intended. Last question. Yes, Mr. Abbott, how will you ensure that the state will keep National Guard troops uh, safe, not being stretched too thin? And over the last few months, there's been reports that have shown at least two guardsmen have committed suicide in Laredo alone. What resources are available as you continue to add personnel I, I will let General Seltzer add more about what resources will uh, be available. But uh, a couple of things about that. Uh, one is uh, one thing that this uh, area will be able to do, it will be able to accommodate uh, more National Guard to make sure that we will be able to respond. But as General Seltzer already pointed out, uh, because of the resources that are going to be available at this base, is for one going to uh, Im improve morale, is going to uh, provide uh, both uh, mental health and physical health care uh, so that where these soldiers are living uh, they're going to have access to the treatment and camaraderie they need uh, in order to be an even more effective soldier. With regard to the specific uh, strategies uh, addressing mental health I'll, be, I'll, I'll allow General Seltzer to provide that answer. Yes, thank you for the question. Obviously every suicide is a tragedy and especially when it comes inside our guard family. Um, as the governor has said, consolidation on this base will allow us to consolidate our very robust psychological health program between our medical doctors, our chaplains, and our psychological health people. We form a, a, a mesh network that works to take care of our soldiers and identify anybody who may be having problems. So again, just reiterating what the governor said, this base is an example of how we can pool our resources to better improve the care for our soldiers and airmen. Lastly, thank you guys. Yeah, be, sorry, thank you. Yeah, thank completed? you. We've taken our question. Was it going to be completed? So the the it, it's being completed in phases. So by mid-April, we'll have a 300 bed uh, capacity, and then we'll add 300. Basically, the phasing is 300 additional beds every 30 days. All right. Thank y'all.